U.S. sends guided missile sub to West Asia to deter Iran, Hezbollah from joining Gaza war. The U.S. military on Sunday said that a guided missile submarine reached West Asia, according to a report by news outlet CNN. The report said that the move can be interpreted as a message of deterrence aimed at regional adversaries of the U.S. Before we dive in details, please subscribe to the channel and stay always one step ahead to know all global important events happening around you. Give a thumbs up and share the video with your family and friends. Let's move on with the video. The U.S. Central Command did not name the submarine, but said that an Ohio-class submarine was entering its area of responsibility and shared a photo where the submarine was pictured in the Suez Canal, northeast of Cairo. Nuclear-powered vessels mostly operate in secrecy and the U.S. Army does not announce the movements or operations of its fleet of ballistic and guided missile subs, except for rare occasions. The announcement is made to ensure Iran and its proxies do not engage in the Israel-Hamas war. The U.S. Army has sent two carrier strike groups and an amphibious ready group to West Asia. The guided missile submarine was sent to West Asia as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held back-to-back -back meetings with officials in Turkey, Iraq, Israel, the West Bank, Jordan and Cyprus. But ahead of his trip, the U.S. Defense Secretary told Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant that the U.S. will deter any state or non-state actor seeking to escalate this conflict, which was a clear reference to Iran and Hezbollah. Both Biden administration staff has also pointed out that civilian casualties in Gaza need to stop. The U.S. has four Ohio-class guided missile submarines. These are known as SSGNs, where the SS denotes submarine, the G denotes guided missile, and the N denotes that the submarine is nuclear-powered as per the U.S. Navy's hull classification symbols for cruise missile submarines. The U.S. Navy's Ohio class of nuclear-powered submarines include 14 ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs, and its four cruise missile submarines, SSGNs. Four of these submarines have been converted to fire Tomahawk cruise missiles rather than nuclear-tipped ballistic missiles. These SSGNs can carry 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles, and these Tomahawks can carry up to a 1,000-pound high-explosive warhead. A former director of operations at the U.S. Pacific Command's Joint Intelligence Center said earlier in 2021 that Tomahawk missiles contain each SSGN can carry 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles, 50% more than U.S. guided missile destroyers pack and almost four times what the U.S. Navy's newest attack subs are armed with. Each Tomahawk can rapidly deliver a lot of firepower. 154 Tomahawks accurately deliver a lot of punch. No opponent of the U.S. can ignore the threat, Carl Schuster told the news outlet. These SSGNs were first used in combat when missile sub USS Florida fired almost 100 Tomahawks against targets in Libya in March 2011 during the Operation Odyssey Dawn. These visits underline the U.S.'s active involvement and commitment to maintaining peace and stability in the region. Let's be clear, though, the submarine is armed with conventional land attack cruise missiles, not nuclear weapons. The United States isn't looking to start a war, but it's not afraid to flex its muscles either. The chess pieces are moving and the game is far from over. Let's rewind a bit. The surprise attack by Hamas on Israel set the stage for this military escalation. In the blink of an eye, the dynamics of the Middle East shifted dramatically. The unexpected aggression from Hamas against Israel caused a ripple effect, impacting the United States regional strategies, its allies, and even its adversaries. The US, in an attempt to reduce tensions in the Middle East, had been directing its focus towards China. But the sudden disruption caused by the Hamas attack threw a wrench into these plans, revealing the precarious nature of the delicate equilibrium in the region. The U.S. had been fostering a normalization process between Israel and Saudi Arabia, a diplomatic dance aiming to strengthen ties and promote stability, but this process was abruptly halted in the wake of the attack. The U.S. was left with no choice but to bolster its military presence in the region, a move that not only represented a significant shift in strategy, but also marked a clear end to its efforts to de-escalate tensions with Iran. The situation put Arab governments in a tight spot. They faced the difficult task of condemning Israel's actions while also coping with pressure from the U.S. The lack of action by Arab leaders to protect Palestinians 
could potentially lead to further regional instability, a situation that everyone wanted to avoid. Iran, a known supporter of Hamas, was also left with a difficult choice. It had to balance its support for Hamas against the risk of being dragged into a direct confrontation with Israel or the US. The consequences of the attack extended beyond the immediate region. The US's involvement in another Middle Eastern conflict and the weakening of its alliances with Arab states could potentially benefit Russia and China, providing them with an opportunity to increase their influence in the region. But that's not all. The ripple effects of this attack are far-reaching. As the US increases its military presence and support for Israel, its position in the Islamic world wavers. This is a time of shifting alliances and emerging adversaries, a complex dance of diplomacy and military strategy. The US's involvement in the Middle East conflict has created ripples that extend far beyond the region. With its alliances with Arab states weakening, a vacuum is being created, one that Russia and China are only too willing to fill. These nations see an opportunity, a chance to gain ground and increase their influence in the region. Arab governments, meanwhile, find themselves in a precarious position. On one hand, they face pressure to condemn Israel's actions. On the other, they are under pressure from the US, their long-standing ally. It's a difficult balance to maintain, and the strain is evident. The lack of action to protect Palestinians could lead to further regional instability, a situation that benefits no one. In the midst of this, Iran also faces a difficult choice. It supports Hamas, but does not want to be dragged into a direct confrontation with Israel or the US. It's a fine line to walk, and every step is fraught with potential consequences. However, it's important to remember that the US's military strategy is not just a show of force. It's a delicate balancing act, a game of chess played on a global stage. Every move is calculated. Every piece has its role. The arrival of the Ohio-class submarine in the Mediterranean, for instance, is not just a display of firepower. It's a message, a deterrent to potential actors in the region. In the end, the US's actions in the Middle East are not just about the here and now. They are about the future, about maintaining a balance of power in a rapidly changing world. It's a high-stakes game, and the outcome is far from certain. The US's military strategy is more than a show of force. It's a delicate balancing act. So, where does this leave us in the grand scheme of things? Well, let's take a moment to recap. We've talked about the arrival of the Ohio-class submarine in the Mediterranean, a heavyweight player capable of carrying up to 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles. The deployment of this submarine alongside other US military assets is a clear message of deterrence to potential actors in the region. This show of force is designed to keep Iran and Hezbollah in check, preventing them from joining the conflict in Gaza. Then there's the ripple effect of the surprise attack by Hamas on Israel. This single event has drastically shifted the dynamics in the Middle East, disrupting US strategies and causing a significant change in the Palestine-Israel conflict. It's put a halt to the normalization process between Israel and Saudi Arabia, forced the US to ramp up its military presence, and ended efforts to de-escalate tensions with Iran. Let's not forget the precarious position this has put Arab governments in. They're caught between a rock and a hard place, facing pressure to condemn Israel's actions while also being nudged by the US. The lack of action could lead to further regional instability. On the other side of the coin, we've seen a potential opportunity for Russia and China. The weakening of US alliances with Arab states could potentially give them more influence in the region. The US military buildup and its support for Israel's actions in Gaza could potentially undermine its position in the Islamic world, allowing Russia and China to gain ground. In short, these events have caused a seismic shift in the power dynamics of the Middle East. The US, with its high-tech defense equipment and strategic military maneuvers, is playing a pivotal role. But the chessboard is complex and the game is far from over. As the U.S. continues its strategic maneuvers, only time will reveal the outcome of this high-stakes geopolitical chess game.